Today, we'll be going over uterine fibroid embolization, commonly abbreviated as UFE. UFE is the delivery of an embolic agent via a catheter placed in the uterine artery to treat symptomatic uterine fibroids. The goal is to limit blood supply to the fibroids, throttling their growth, and ultimately shrinking them, while simultaneously avoiding permanent damage to the uterus. Fibroids are benign tumors composed of smooth muscle cells and fibrous connective tissue arising from the muscular layer of the uterus. They are highly variable in size and are classified based on their location, submucosal, intramural, and subserosal. Their size can dramatically increase during pregnancy and regress after menopause, suggesting an association with estrogen. Overall, fibroids are one of the most common benign pelvic neoplasms in women with a greater incidence in African American women. They are often diagnosed in the 30s and 40s. Until the introduction of UFE, most gynecologic approaches to fibroids were centered either on one, hormonal treatment to control symptoms, or two, surgery to remove the fibroids or the uterus that house them. Hormonal therapy is often the first step. Administration of GnRH agonists produces a hypoestrogenic state which causes fibroid size regression, but also unfavorable hot flashes, sleep disturbances, and bone changes. The side effect profile discourages long-term use, and often fibroids return to size after cessation of such therapy. The next steps are more invasive. When considering surgical options, hysterectomies and myomectomies have been the classical treatment options. In the mid-1990s, however, UFE was introduced as an alternative technique to treat fibroids. In 1999, a landmark registry in the field called fibroid was initiated. And in the mid-2000s, several randomized control trials, such as the ME and REST trials, contributed to the establishment of UFE as a viable alternative to surgery. While most fibroids do not cause symptoms, the indications for UFE include heavy menstrual bleeding and bulk-related symptoms. Menorrhagia is suggested to be caused by the distortion of the endometrial cavity. If bleeding is excessive, severe anemia can occur at times requiring blood transfusions and hospitalization. Mass effect related symptoms can lead to pelvic pressure and pain, low back pain, and abdominal feeling of fullness. Fibroids commonly compress the colon and bladder, causing constipation and urinary symptoms, respectively. Every patient undergoing UFE needs to have pregnancy excluded. Another absolute contraindication is a known gynecologic malignancy. Although preoperative UFE is sometimes requested prior to surgical resection, it should never be considered the sole therapy for this indication. Relative contraindications include coagulopathy, renal insufficiency, and previous internal iliac artery ligation. History to contrast allergy should be investigated and premedicated if necessary. Another contraindication is unfavorable fibroid configuration, such as a large, pedunculated, subserosal fibroid with a narrow stalk. Now to discuss the procedure. Before procedure, Imaging should include a transvaginal and transabdominal ultrasound and MRI. Due to operator-dependent nature of the ultrasound, MRI is the ideal imaging modality. The goal for imaging is to assess fibroid size, number, and location. Other potential confounders of procedure success, like adenomyosis, should be investigated. The patient should have had a current pap smear that is normal and an endometrial biopsy to result other pathology. Pregnancy tests should exclude active pregnancy and tests for STDs, bacteria, and appropriate other testing is recommended. Patient is NPO and prophylactic bilateral compression devices and an anti-emetic agent like ondansetron are administered. A foley is in place to prevent the bladder from overfilling with contrast and precluding view of the uterus. A small nick in the skin in the groin is made and a catheter is inserted into the artery. The overall pelvic vasculature is evaluated under fluoroscopic guidance, the catheter is guided through the artery to the uterus and advanced to the site of the fibroids. With angiography, the uterine artery origin is identified, and normal versus variant anatomy is confirmed. Due to the tortuous nature of the uterine artery, atraumatic catheter advancement is essential to prevent vessel spasm. Once the fibroids are located, various embolic agents are injected. The ovarian arteries are evaluated for any parasitized blood flow to the enlarged fibroid uterus. A series of angiographic images are obtained pre- and post-embolization to ensure proper occlusion of blood flow to the fibroids. Pain management is critical post-procedure. The pain is usually due to fibroid ischemia, 
and managed with IV narcotics via PCA pump, and then transitioned to oral pain meds during discharge. Other potential post-op symptoms include cramping, fatigue, malaise, and nausea. With effective symptomatic control, most patients are discharged within a few days, and 7 to 10 days is the usual time to resume activity. However, direct vaginal insertions are discouraged for longer periods of time. Compared to hysterectomy and myomectomy, UFE has the advantage of substantially faster recovery time. Shown here are several potential complications from UFE. One is fibroid passage or retention, which could result in substantial labor-like pain, vaginal discharge, bleeding, and infection. Another adverse outcome, though infrequent, is ovarian failure with amenorrhea as the result of non-target embolization of the ovarian vessels fed by the uterine arteries. Lastly, a temporary elevation of procoagulant factors can contribute to pulmonary embolus. Depending on the risk factors, the prevention and management ranges from early ambulation, pharmacologic anticoagulation, to thrombolysis. Long-term follow-up is necessary to evaluate treatment success or failure and to assess for any evolving complications. While a significant portion of patients report resolution or improvement of their uterine bleeding, some patients undergo additional procedures for definitive relief.